meteorologist Rob Martin is live in the Weather Center. We've got some showers around, warm temperatures. Was it a record today? We'll have details, so stay with us. As the snow has spread north of the Mason-Dixon line, heavier bands are coming in as well. So it's going to be off and on heavy light type of thing. So if it lightens up, don't think it's over because not even close. The center of circulation this thing is still down in Georgia right now. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, HMTV meteorologist Rob Martin. Last night, we were using one of these. Today, one of these consensus. This afternoon is about uh, 24 inches right now, and people want to know when is this going to end? What would you do if a cat wandered onto your I would have grabbed that little mongrel. I would have made him my little weather puppet. You just never know what <laughs> will wander onto the news that do. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, the snake again! Got him! Oh my gosh. Welcome on this Saturday morning. If you are up all night and you might be perusing the web this morning, uh, I'm with you on the no sleep thing. We got 12 inches on the ground as of 6 a.m. Well, Rob, I know you have lots to talk about. I'll let you get to it. Yeah, we got a classic nor'easter set up on our hands right now. All the ingredients are in place. We put Washington County in perspective. Cold air, which has been absent for a good part of the winter, it's not going anywhere. It's parked over us. The storm system to the south is going to go right off the Hatteras shoreline. It's picking up the moisture off the Gulf, and then it's going to pick it up off the Atlantic as well. That is a recipe for a nor'easter. As the combined flow around both of those systems comes in, that is a recipe for a blizzard with the winds added in. So that that's your forecast graphically in a nutshell. We don't have a whole lot going on right now. That's good news. It's breaking the action. Just a little bit of rain sneaking into southern Tennessee, which is a, the northern fringe of this system. Just a hint as to what we have coming our way tomorrow, but it's not going to be in the form of rain. It's going to be all in the form of snow because we have cold temperatures around, which is the only reason I'm really showing this map. And it's a good head start with the temperatures because they're going to go up into the 20s, low 30s tomorrow, and that is it. A below freezing. By the time we hit 3 o'clock, the snow will be on its way down in southern and central Virginia. We'll not be starting here until 6 o'clock or later, so it looks like we'll escape both commute times without any snow at all. As this thing comes up, you can see the snow area will start to expand as it encounters the cold air in place. So by 2 o'clock, it'll still be well to the south of us, which is good news down there in Harrisonburg and uh, Roanoke. But at any rate, it will continue to spread getting here by 6, 7 o'clock, which is the latest estimate. We have another estimate, maybe a little bit later than that, which would be even better news. But it's just going to hold off the inevitable. Then the winds will start to come around as well off the bay right around midnight in the wee hours of Saturday morning. And that's what prompted blizzard warnings along those counties uh, south and east of I-95 for the most part. And then this thing is going to uh, going to set up offshore. It's not going to move that fast. The wraparound snow on the west side is going to continue all the way into Saturday. It's probably not going to even let up until Saturday afternoon. So impacts are just as important as snow amounts. We already know the amounts are going to be heavy. That means snow and blowing snow with the winds, especially in the blizzard warning area to the south and east of us. They're going to have wind gusts to 50 miles an hour along the bay. So that means visibility is near zero. Not only are the roads impassable, you can't see anything even if you get in your car anyway. There'll be some power outages is around as well to deal with and then of course the accumulations widespread 12 inches plus likely 18 inches plus here in Washington County and as we go along the spine of the mountains bordering the 81 and this includes some of the areas up near South Mountain could be in excess of two feet so I'm buying into this graphic uh, pretty much all the way between I-95 and 81 we're looking at 12 to 24 inches but the mounts taper off you go out towards Johnstown maybe six inches Pittsburgh is barely going to be affected by this system at all let's get to the timing once again six to nine o'clock tomorrow is when the onset of it starts not the heaviest snow but it's not going to waste too much time getting heavy and it'll be heavy after midnight an inch per hour all the way into saturday afternoon that'll put a quick foot on the ground and then a little bit more after that put us up to about 18 inches so this is serious serious business good news is sunday it's out of here we'll be digging out and the temperatures will be above freezing next week and allow this stuff to melt. Rob? Okay guys, we're back here at Sky's the Limit Balloon Adventures. These things are full of hot air back here and some of it's going in the balloon. We're going to be up there in a little bit right now with seasoned pilot James Lawson. Tell me, how do you steer these things?
wings. What you have to do is you've got to fly at different altitude to catch the wind. When we come back, we're going to be about 5,000 feet up there in the wind, in the weather, giving you some shots, so stay with us. Hey, we're back. we're back up in the balloon. We're 4,000 feet up here, and all my fears have been laid to rest. I was a little apprehensive about this. Not anymore. It is really pillowy up here, and we're going to take a look down now at the Fairbanks Ranch Golf Course from 4,000 feet, and it is just gorgeous up here. Now, your forecast with Storm Tracker Live. And welcome back. We are at Covenant Hospice here off the 231 across from O'Charlie's Restaurant. And there is a beautiful little ceremony going on inside. I'm here with Beth Kenward. She is directing activities. Beth, um, tell us a little bit more. Tell us a little bit more about this. The Tree of Light ceremony is a ceremony that Covenant Hospice hosts each December. 